Today is Friday, so we are going to continue our preparation for Sunday. This Sunday is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and we will look at the propers for the day. Let us begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings that you give us in your Son. We pray that you bless our time looking at uh, the parts of the worship service that lead us to a greater understanding of your blessings and the wonderful opportunity we have to sing your praises. We pray this according to your rich grace and mercy. Amen. The fifth Sunday of Easter has the Latin name cantate, which means sing. It comes from the first word of the intro of the day in Latin, which is sing to the Lord a new song. The intro of the day comes from Psalm 98. This is a psalm of praise. And the antiphon is from part of verse 1 and part of verse 2. Sing to the Lord a new song, and then the acclamation, Alleluia. So, a new song, because God has given us salvation. It's, it's new. So we sing a new song. And the reason for this, for he has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. Alleluia. Now, God is the one God. All of the nations uh, served other gods, but they are false gods. And so the true God reveals his righteousness, his, his holiness, his grace, um, in the sight of the whole world, in the sight of the nations. It continues on. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. This is metaphorical language that uh, the scriptures use uh, for God and his great actions of salvation, using his right hand, his holy arm, uh, to work, uh, to bring about uh, great miracles, great uh, acts of salvation, such as the Exodus leading his people out of slavery and through the Red Sea. And there are many others as well. So it continues on. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel, all the ends of the earth, have seen the salvation of our God. He has remembered his steadfast love. This is a, an important theme in the scriptures that, that God remembers. Now, <clears throat> this is not like, um, okay, I got to try to remember this, you know, if because if I forget, that won't be good. It's uh, to, to remember means that your, your sights are always set on something. So in this case, God has his sights set on his people and he remembers his love for them. And <clears throat> so this is, this is the way God, this is the way God is toward us. He, he, he does not forget us. In other words, he does not turn his uh, gaze away from us. But he is faithfulness, so he has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. He is, he is always faithful to his people. And then, uh, look at this. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Now, when you look at the Old Testament, you will see this now and then where, where people in, in the, the other nations, they... They're aware of the great salvific acts of God, his, his great works. How is that possible? Because God is almighty, and when he works his wonders, uh, he makes sure that it, is, that it is known. Now, that doesn't mean everybody believes. It doesn't mean everybody um, automatically believes he's the true God. There are many who still reject him. But nevertheless, all the ends of the earth 
have seen the salvation of our God. And then the concluding uh, verse, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth, break forth into joyous song and sing praises. So the theme uh, for the day, uh, sing, and we begin that with the intro in, in, the, in the first verse of the intro it. Sing to the Lord a new song, the closing verse. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. All the earth break forth into joyous song and sing praises. This is the, um, this is, uh, the, the blessing that God gives to us. He not only gives us his salvation, he not only forgives our sins, but he also uh, gives us the, um, the, uh, the arena, so to speak, to, to praise him, to, to sing our praises to him. And that not only is in thanksgiving to him on our part, but, it, but it's also gives glory to him. And it is also a, a proclamation to the rest of the world. When we, when we sing to God and we uh, declare to one another and declare to the whole world who he is and what he has done. So that is the intro of the day. The collect of the day. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The address to God here is very um, uh, simple. Oh God, usually there's some, usually it's uh, a little more than that, but this is just simply, oh God. Now, the, the, what is said about him uh, helps, maybe helps us um, think about why the address is simply to God. You make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. So when the address is simply to God, that calls to our mind that there is only one God. And we, his people, we are described here as his faithful. So how is it that we are his faithful? It's by grace. It's because of what he has done for us. What, how he um, that that he has saved us in baptism, and the Holy Spirit has granted to us faith, and we are sustained in that faith by the gospel, by the the sacraments. So we are the faithful. It doesn't mean that that we never sin. It doesn't mean that sometimes we we falter and fail. It does mean that we are the faithful people of God, and that's. Uh, that's just a, an amazing thing that, that that is true about us. And it, it, it also brings us to the awareness of our constant need for confessing our sins and repenting of our sins and being forgiven of our sins. So what does God do? He makes the minds of his faithful to be of one will. Now, each congregation... <clears throat> is made up of, of many different people. And everybody's got their own ideas. Everybody's got their own uh, likes and dislikes. Everybody thinks, uh, you know, has differences in how they think things should be done. So how is it that all of these minds can be of one will? Uh, you're, we're just talking one congregation. It, you, Talk about the entire Holy Christian and Apostolic Church. How is it that we are of one will? It's because God makes our minds to be of one will. He is the one who causes it to happen. He is the one who makes it happen. And it is, it, it, it is only by the fact that we are in the Christian Church that we are actually of one will. And so we 
we, um, we submit our own individual wills to the one will of, of God. So what is our petition? Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise. So this, this helps us understand how it is that we are of one will. If, if each of us individually are going by what we personally think is the right thing, by, by the way we would prefer it, then we're not looking at um, what it is that, that is that is actually better. And that is what God has commanded. And that is what he has promised. So we pray that he would grant us to love what he has commanded. When you look at the Ten Commandments, what do you see? Uh, you see things that you're not supposed to do. You see things that you're supposed to do. Do you see things that you love, that you say, this, this is what I love. I want to live this way. Uh, the second part, to desire what he has promised, that, that's much easier, isn't it? When God gives all of his wonderful promises, yeah, we, we desire those. But it, but it really flows out of what he has commanded. Those things he has commanded us are for our good and, and, and they're for the benefit of others as well. So we pray that he would grant us to love what he has commanded and desire what he has promised so that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are, are found. So where are true joys found? In the commands of God and the promises of God. That's where. So if we love what he has commanded, if we desire what he has promised, then our eyes, sorry, our hearts will be fixed where true joys are found. They're not found in all of our own individual little wills or desires or ways we think things should be. They're found in the one holy, good, gracious will of God. And that's really a, a really wonderful phrase uh, where true joys are found. So we pray that our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. How is this possible? Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. That is the collect of the day. The hymn of the day is Dear Christians, One and All Rejoice. This hymn was written by Martin Luther in 1523. It was Luther's first congregational hymn and a hymn that not only teaches doctrine, teaches the true faith and tells the story of salvation, but it was also one in a long string of hymns that Luther wrote in order to do just that, to teach the faith. So uh, singing hymns and writing hymns was a very important part of the Reformation. The first verse of Dear Christians, One and All Rejoice. Dear Christians, One and All, Rejoice with exaltation springing and with united heart and voice and holy rapture singing. Proclaim the wonders God has done, how his right arm, the victory won, what price our ransom cost him. So it's a, an exhortation, dear Christians, one and all. So each of you, all of you, rejoice with exaltation springing and with united heart and voice. So when we are all singing together and especially singing the faith, we're, we're united in not only uh, our voice, but also our heart. 
and holy rapture singing, uh, rapture, uh, joyful ecstasy, um, a, a holy uh, joy, a holy ecstasy. Proclaim the wonders God has done. So that is one of the things, that is one of the purposes of singing hymns in church is to proclaim God's wonders, how his right arm, the victory won. Now, we've talked about this before, that one of the ways uh, God describes his salvific acts is, is with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. And what price our ransom cost him? So this, this is one of the great truths of the, of the faith of, the, of Christianity, that salvation is free, but it has come at a cost. Now, the cost is not borne by, by us, but rather by God himself. So it came at great, great cost. What price our ransom cost him? Verse 2, fast bound in Satan's chains I lay. Death brooded darkly over o'er me, o'er me. Since was my, sin was my torment night and day. In sin my mother bore me. But daily deeper still I fell. My life became a living hell. So firmly sin possessed me. This is very descriptive language that Luther is using. Uh, fast bound in Satan's chains I lay. So when we are in, in our sin, we're, we're chained. Uh, think of, of uh, the man who was, who was chained up uh, uh, because he was tormented by an evil spirit. And death brooded darkly o'er me. This is almost language of, of, of depression. Sin was my torment night and day. In sin my mother bore me. This is the, the confession of Scripture that we are conceived in sin, that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We are we're conceived and born in sin. But daily Still I fell, my life became a living hell, so firmly sin possessed me. Uh, one of the ways the Book of Concord, the Lutheran Confessions, talk about our, our, our sinful nature and, and the struggle against it is, is uh, the, the um, now I just drew a blank on it, the, uh, anyway, something along the lines of the, the, the torment of, of, um, the, the sinful condition, the, the struggles against the, uh, our sinful condition. Uh, verse 3, my own good works all came to naught, no grace or merit gaining, free will against God's judgment wrought, sorry, fought, dead to all good remaining. My fears increased till sheer despair, left only death to be my share. The pangs of hell I suffered. So th these uh, these two verses here really go into detail about the depth of of our despair and very uh, biblical language. My, my all good, my own good works all came to naught. So if you if you have ever sought salvation by doing good works. Um, it's, it's, it's fleeting. If, if you have any sort of um, good feeling about it, ultimately it leads you to despair because you realize there's, there's nothing good that you can do to overcome the depth of your sin. So no grace or merit gaining, free will against God's judgment fought. Uh, if, if we think that we are able to, uh, to choose to be saved, to do anything good to be saved. Um, that's just uh, fighting against God's judgment. His judgment is clear that we are condemned in our sin. So dead to all good remaining. My fears increased till sheer despair left only death to be my share. The pangs of hell I suffered. 
so this the 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 uh, the torment of conscience, the um, whatever that phrase is, the uh, the the torment um, of conscience. That uh, that's the way the Lutheran confessions speak of it. Verse four. But God had seen my wretched state before the world's foundation, and mindful of His mercies great, He planned for my salvation. He turned to me a father's heart. He did not choose the easy part, but gave his dearest treasure. So verses two and three uh, declare what we often call the law, the, the, the judgment against our sin, driving us to despair, leading us to repentance. And verse four moves in then to the gospel and, and God not only coming down with us, uh, coming down on us with his judgment and condemnation, but also seeing our wretched state. And, and before the world's foundation and mindful of his mercy's great plan for my salvation. So he, he did not wait. He, he already knew beforehand of what would befall us. And he already planned it beforehand. There's, there's nothing you can do to be saved. There's nothing you can do to overcome your sin. He has already uh, accomplished everything before you were ever born, before the world's foundation. And again, this is, all, this is all biblical language. He turned to me a father's heart. He did not choose the easy part. So um, the, the, the father's heart, um, the, the love of a father who would do anything for his child and did not choose the easy part, but gave his dearest treasure. So we know what that treasure is. And uh, Luther then goes on to speak of that in verse 5. God, it's time to have compassion. Then go, bright jewel of my crown, and bring to all salvation. From sin and sorrow set them free. Slay better death for them, that they may live with you forever. So his own son, his beloved son, his 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 dearest treasure. And the father says to him, it's time to have compassion. Go, bright jewel of my crown, bring to all salvation. This is a, uh, a beautiful testimony of what uh, theologians call objective justification. That is, Christ came for the salvation of the world. Christ accomplished salvation on the cross for the, for the sin of the world. Um, there's not one person, there's not one group of people, there's not a particular people uh, who he said, well, this is not for you. Um, I, I did not die for your sins. Christ paid the penalty for the sin of the world. So bring to all salvation from sin and sorrow, set them free. So notice, notice what Luther has done here. Uh, in, in, in one phrase, he has captured all that he spoke of in verses two and three with our, our sin and our despair. Uh, the, the, the problem that we are condemned for our sin and, and what comes out of that, the, the despair. So from sin and sorrow, set them free. Slay bitter death for them. So Bitter death is not just simply that we are going to die, we'll someday stop breathing, but, but the death that, that ends our relationship with God forever. So slay bitter death for them, that they may live with you forever. So this, this is what Christ has come to bring. He's brought, he has brought us out of death, that is eternal death, and into life forever. Verse six, the son obeyed his father's will, was born a virgin mother, and God's good pleasure to fulfill, he came to be my brother. His royal power disguised he bore, a servant's form like mine he wore to lead the devil captive. Now, this is a, a beautiful confession of faith of 
the obedience of Christ. We often think of his, um, his suffering and his death as the source of our salvation, and rightly so. And of course, um, Luther is going to um, speak of that as well in this hymn. But along with that is his, uh, is his obedience. He lived the, the life that, that we have not, and, and frankly, that we, we, we cannot, we're unable to. But, but the Son, Jesus Christ, uh, uh, joyfully obeyed his Father's will. He was born a virgin mother. So uh, again, very succinctly, uh, Luther captures a lot of theology here. He was born um, of the virgin. So we know well the, the doctrine of this, that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He was not uh, conceived uh, by the union of a, a man and a woman, but was conceived in the womb of his mother Mary, who was a virgin. It was by the power of the Holy Spirit that she was able to conceive and bear a son. And God's good pleasure to fulfill, he came to be my brother. So uh, notice the, uh, the contrast here between God's holiness and his judgment and condemnation on sinners and his good pleasure, which is fulfilled in his son in his son Jesus, who obeyed his, father will, his father's will and suffered in our place, to be our brother, which is also, a, a, um, again, succinct in such a great confession of faith that we are children of God by virtue of the Son of God. And so, yes, Christ is our Lord. Uh, um, uh, astonishingly, he is also our brother. We are sons and daughters of God the Father, along with the Son of God, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> His royal power disguised he bore, a servant's form like mine he wore, to lead the devil captive. Uh, Luther knew the scriptures so well, and, and, and so much of what he writes is, is just scriptural language, scriptural thought. So uh, his royal power he disguised, he, he took on the form of a servant to lead the devil captive. So we, we saw earlier how um, the, uh, in Satan's chains I lay, fast bound in Satan's chains. Now Christ comes to lead the devil captive. He is going to bind Satan. Verse 7, to me he said, stay close to me, I am your rock and castle, your ransom I myself will be, for you I strive and wrestle, for I am yours and you are mine, and where I am you may remain, the foe shall not divide us. So verses two th verse 1 was, a, was an exhortation to Christians, verses 2 through 3, a very personal uh, um um, plea or, or prayer to God of our, the depths of our sin. And then verses uh, 4 and 5, uh, verse 4, God just um, talking about how God saw us in our, our pitiful state. And then verse five, verses five, verse 5, God the Father speaking to his Son. Verse 6, uh, again, a description of the Son, what He has done for our salvation. And then verse 7, a very personal, um, well, I don't want to say declaration, uh, of a personal um, Jesus Christ Himself um, speaking to us tenderly. Stay close to me. I am your rock and, camp and castle, your ransom I myself will be. So there is the, the clear declaration of the, um, the atonement of, of Jesus Christ paying for, uh, of offering up himself as the sacrifice 
to God the Father for the sin of the world. For you, I strive and wrestle. So what, what are we trying to do? We're trying to strive and wrestle and overcome our sins. We're trying to do good works, get in God's good favor. Christ is the one who strives and wrestles for us. He says, for I am yours, you are mine. Where I am, you may remain. The foe shall not divide us. So there's no question Satan is powerful. We talked about that earlier in verse 2. We were in his chains. But, but, but Christ is the stronger man who will overcome Satan. Verse 8, though he will shed my precious blood, me of my life bereaving, all this I suffer for your good, be steadfast and believing. Life will from death the victory win. My innocence shall bear your sin, and you are blessed forever. This is uh, astonishing. Though he, that is the foe, will shed my precious blood. You see, we are, we are under the, um, uh, sa Satan is, is attacking us, and, and G it's as if Jesus stepped in in front of us to protect us. And he took the bullet for us, so to speak. Uh, though he will shed my precious blood, me of my life bereaving, he gave his, Christ gave his own life for us. All this I suffer for your good. So therefore, be steadfast and believing. Life will from, from death, the victory win. My innocence shall bear your sin and you are blessed forever. So beautiful proclamation of the, uh, um, the, the sacrifice of Christ on the cross for our sin. His innocence bears our sin. We are the ones that deserve eternal damnation. He bore it in our place. Verse 9, Now to my Father I depart, from earth to heaven ascending, and heavenly wisdom to impart, the Holy Spirit sending. In trouble he will comfort you and teach you always to be true, and into truth shall guide you. So now Luther, uh, again, with this um, taking Jesus as, as, as speaking to us tenderly, now speaks of, of when he will depart from this earth. To my Father I depart from earth to heaven ascending, and heavenly wisdom to impart the Holy Spirit sending. So he will leave in, when he ascends into heaven, and he has done that. But, but when he does, he will impart heavenly wisdom. So heavenly wisdom will come down to earth. So just as God himself came to earth in Jesus Christ, so now as he has ascended into heaven, the Holy Spirit will come down to earth with his heavenly wisdom. In trouble, he will comfort you. So that is one of the ways the, the, the scriptures speak of the Holy Spirit, as the comforter. In trouble, okay, so in trouble, he will comfort you and teach you always to be true and into truth shall guide you. So that's another way the scriptures speak of the Holy Spirit, that he he is our, our teacher. He uh, guides us into all truth. And the way he does that primarily is through the written word of God and through the proclamation of the word of God. Finally, verse 10, what, what on earth have I done? What I on earth have done and taught, guide all your life in teaching. So shall the kingdom's work be wrought and honored in your preaching. But watch lest foes with base alloy the heavenly treasures should destroy. This final word I leave you. Now, this, um, <clears throat> this is uh, verses 7 through 10. Is uh, I, I'm extending it to, to Jesus speaking to us as Christians. Uh, Luther is really taking those, those words that Jesus speaks to his apostles 
in John uh, 14 through 16. And so what he says is what I on earth have done and taught, guide all your life in teaching. And so we see that with the apostles. That's exactly what happened in the book of Acts and then in their writings in the epistles. So shall the kingdom's work be wrought and honored in your preaching. So how is the kingdom of God going to continue? How is it going to be spread through the proclamation of the gospel? And then the warning, but watch lest foes with base alloy. And I have to say, I'm not exactly sure what alloy is being referred to here. If it's just simply uh, referring to a metal, in which case it would be a, um, a, uh, a metaphor. Uh, so a, 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 a metal that is not pure, or if it's being used more in the way alloy is sometimes used as a mixture of, of something good and something bad or, or precious metal that is, um, ha has some imperfections in it. Nevertheless, what he is saying is that there are foes within the church and without that have evil intent to, to tear down the true doctrine of the Bible and of Christianity. And they seek this heavenly treasure to destroy. So Christ says this final word, I leave you. So there's all the beautiful promise, all the beautiful gospel, and the warning that uh, we need to be vigilant. We need to stand firm. We need to be in the scriptures. We need to hear the word of God proclaimed. We need to daily live in our baptism. We need to receive the Lord's Supper often for our forgiveness and strength. It's a beautiful hymn, uh, one of Luther's early hymns, and a great uh, proclamation of the gospel and a great thing to sing. Dear Christians, one and all rejoice. So that is the hymn of the day for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Heavenly and gracious Father, thank you for sending your Son. We thank you that as he has suffered, died, and rose for all our sins and has ascended into heaven, he has also sent his Holy Spirit so that we may be comforted and guided into all truth. We pray that you bless us and keep us in your son's holy name. Amen. The Lord's peace be with you.